Good day and welcome to a new video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Heyo and welcome today. You're joined by uh, me and also the Elf's Cauldron. Um, yeah. And uh, she's an Australian artist. Uh, she has some pretty cool work here that you can see. Um, yeah, so go check out her work at uh, DeviantArt forward slash the Alps Cauldron. Uh, she also has art station and other things like that. Um, See, so what other social medias do you have? Um, I have a Facebook page and I'm on Instagram. Awesome. Yeah, I have oh. quite a few. Um, but yeah, tell me a bit about yourself. Um, well, actually, I live in Australia right now. Hmm. But I, I never actually was born here. Hmm. Okay. A town called Johannesburg in South Africa. Ah, yeah, yeah. And I moved out of that country to come. Well, I went to travel quite a bit. But I've always been reading and I've always been drawing and sketching since I was really little. And that's just followed me. Australia, and I'm sure if anyone's ever been to Melbourne, they would see how artistic and creative the actual city itself is. There's art everywhere you look, and that's a very inspiring place to be and awesome. get more motivated to create. And that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I mean, there, you know, there's a lot of places out there that are very artistic. Um, you know, I. I did a course at Wanganui here in New Zealand and that's a very artsy fartsy kind of a place there's lots, <laughs> you know there's lots of stuff going on there there's uh, mules on the walls in a few places there um, there's a lot of glass art there's heaps of people making things for glass art you know um, mm. All sort of all sorts of interesting things, and there's also a few muse museums around there, and it's um yeah it's just a lovely little art town which was very inspirational to be around, um, mm. and every year I think it was they did an art tour where you just go around all these locations, um, museums, uh, people's like sheds and things you know artist sheds they were open. Um, mm. yeah, and you just got to see and meet all these different artists, which was very interesting. Yeah, and definitely that kind of experience when you're young is very important. Yeah, definitely. It, um, yeah, it, it takes a bit of guiding, you know, um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, I've. I've always loved art, you know, as as a young kid, um, growing up and now into adulthood, you know, I'm still kind of living my young years with some of the stuff I'm kind of doing, um, yeah, which mm. is awesome. Are you? Sorry? How old are you? So, at, I'm 24, going on 25. Um, no worries. Yeah, how about you? Uh, I recently just turned 21. Awesome. Uh, we're still pretty young, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, every year goes past, I'm like, oh, you know, I feel older. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm halfway to my 30s. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's the way yeah. I see it, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, each year pass and um, I get more knowledge and things like that, so... You know. Yeah, to totally. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, yeah, um, have you studied or, um, done anything like that? Uh, you mean artistic-wise? Hmm, yeah. Um, the only studies that I've ever really done on the subject was in high school. Hmm. Extracurriculum classes for that. Um, very helpful, <laughs> definitely. I know there's a lot of mixed opinions about whether or not art school and art classes and, you know, that kind of thing is worth, if it's really worth it or not. 
I I do understand there's it's two sides to that. Yeah, yeah. From my experience when I was actually in high school, I, I learned very quickly that the the art classes that they teach you are not to help you further your career. <laughs> yeah. They're not they're not they're not they're not, they're not designed for that. They're not meant to help you, you know, expand on your set of very personal skills. Point of art classes and art schools like that, you would take more personalized, more custom courses. Mm-hmm. Really enjoyed about my studies in art school or art class was that they are very, very serious about teaching you the fundamentals. Mm. Extremely important as a basis for everything that you do in your career as an artist so you know what you take from art class in school and to base your experience on later on it takes students and people in the professional field a bit longer to master those basic fundamental skills if they haven't done an art class at least an art class yeah yeah, I mean, you know, each their own. Um, obviously, you know, some people can pick those things up on their own oh, yeah. sometimes. Um, but yeah, like you're saying, it is, it, you know, if you don't have a little bit of foundation and understanding, you know, those basics of just like, mm. go into it without, you know, knowing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's, um, you know, trying to, it's like, first riding a bike without knowing like trainer wheels you know you first you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um you got to kind of learn on trainer wheels first um mm-hmm. i mean yeah there are some people that just hop on a bike and roll out the off or something um yeah. but you know most people do learn trainer wheels first and then yeah ride their bike after um, yeah hmm uh, it, it's like a, uh, I, I, I know there's different experiences with that, with, you know, with that kind of thing. Hmm. I mean, I know myself, looking back on it, um, if I hadn't wasted so much time, i gotten to where I am now a lot faster if I actually took it a bit more seriously. Hmm. That's why I'm saying it is important. It's not for everyone, probably not, but... Yeah, it's, it's, it's that mental state of um, taking it seriously as well. Um, yeah. Because you could sign up for these art classes and things um, and just kind of push it away or just don't take notice of it. Um, but if you take it seriously, then, you know, you start to actually, things start to click um, and you start to get things underway. Definitely. Um, yeah, so what really keeps you painting and creating things? Uh, well, this, <laughs> this is such a hard question. <laughs> it is, it is, eh? <laughs> um, I'm sure, like, this is uh, so many different ways. Um, I'm sure you ask that uh, about people quite a lot, don't you? <laughs> uh. I mean, it has popped up every now and again. Um, I mean, you know, it's it's a very, obviously, you said a very hard question, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, for me, per se, you know, um, what keeps me going is I love, you know, seeing um, things in my head, you know. I, I like to create mm-hmm. things. I've always liked to create things and to see um, the idea that's in my head or the story of what I want to tell. I just really like to get that out there and try to um, create that. You know, I love to, for instance, like me creating this book at the moment. Um, I just really love to see how the characters turn out, how the how the stories turned out, and that what keeps me going. I really want to see like what the next page is going to look like, um, and you know what the next painting or illustration mm. is that I'm going to create. I just, you know, I really want to see what I'm going to create next. Um, oh, yeah. You know, that, that's kind of the thing that keeps me going. Um, I mean, you know, everyone has their own things, you know, they may um, enjoy video games, enjoy um, 
just you know going for walks and um the beauty of nature as well you know seeing nature mm. and just loving to draw that um All right. So the question was like, what what keeps me going? What keeps me creating? Is that right? Yep. Um. Well, let's see. To be those spurts of inspiration that really hit you, and then you just want to do or capture some moment of life or some imagination. Uh, that's the most common one that I've had. Was just ins- inspiration. Hmm. I guess so like a more personal and a bit more of a m- emotional scale because sometimes it's it's really not easy to keep yourself motivated art is such a a personal it's such an emotional thing and it can get attacked and from that viewpoint you do get scared to create or at least I get scared to create if I had mm-hmm. and the thing that really keeps me creating is just the, f- the just knowing actually that it is something that I can do. Not many people can take or a story from their minds and make it real. Mm. You know, there's there's not a lot of people that can on such a big level bring their creations and their imaginations to life. And that's the, that's really what keeps me going is when I actually or I have a world or I have a story that I want to tell and it comes to life. I make it real. And that's very satisfying to see. Yeah, definitely is, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely why, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, yeah. I, I I like to do a little bit more too, um, you know, giving feedback is always great too, um, yeah. and things like that, and seeing what, you know, what other people are doing as well is quite cool, um, yeah, what, uh, so what mediums have you tried? Uh, I, uh, okay, I've tried oil painting, and... Uh, that was a bit of a messy situation. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, th- I think the the first and only time I had oil painting was a Sunday n- evening, and I had no idea what the heck I was doing, <laughs> and I just painted on a big canvas with my hands. <laughs> yeah. And of course, it's oil paints. It's very, very vibrant, and it just stains. <laughs> <laughs> And I I go to school the next day with red and black hands. (laughs) And you could not imagine the amount of trouble that I got. So (laughs) I've never, ever used it again. (laughs) Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. But (laughs) I've used used watercolor. I've used Copics. I've used um, Prismacolor pencils. I've used random, normal, cheap color pencils. Hmm. One of the pieces that I did that I was really, really happy with was I used Sharpies. <laughs> and then I went on top of that with... And it turned out it's very different to anything I've ever done before. Oh. And I definitely want to do that again. Um, I've used graphite. Hmm. And I've used digital. Awesome. Quite a lot. Yeah. I've definitely played around too. I mean, um, I haven't coloured my hands red and black, but... um, (laughs) It's not a good experience. (laughs) I did have the experience with oils. Um, It was just like the first time using it, and then it was like, how do I clean my brushes, you know? (laughs) Because they were like (laughs) stained blue, and I was like, oh no. So I did look around, and I found some... um, turpentine at the shop or something like that so <laughs> yeah. I got there to clean my brushes and then it was the whole problem of getting rid of it because you can't just you know you're not supposed to just chuck it down the drain or um, mm. anything like that because you can kill marine life and all that other stuff so um, yeah <laughs> it was it was an issue but I went through it um, 
and I haven't really used oil since, but um, they they do interest me, but just I mm. guess it's not my thing either. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, but I've I've used I used color pencil for like three or four years. Um, yeah, I just you know it was easy for me to pick up. You know, when I was a kid. I always had colour pencils um, in my pencil case, so you know it's really simple just to pick up those colour pencils and and do colouring with them. Um, and then eventually I got more into it. I bought like my own set of colour professional like colour pencils, um, the Prisma colour ones, and oh, yeah. I, you know I still have that collection. And you know every now and again, you know I've d I did one. I'm pretty sure I did one last year. I did one earlier this year, I think. I did a colour pencil. Um, so every now and again, like once a year or something, I might do a colour pencil piece. Um, they do mm. take a little bit longer than digital, I suppose. Um, and, you know, with this recording it as well, it's um, a bit challenging too, you know, getting the right angles and the right time of day. Uh, recording it so it's a bit more challenging to keep it keep this YouTube channel running and doing that at the same time um, yeah but you know I know it can be done so I did you know earlier this year did a paint a bird painting uh, oh a hedgehog painting sorry um, oh, I was kind of the end of last year but yeah I did that um, and I still managed to keep up and, and things like that it's awesome yeah, but yeah, it's um it's cool experimenting with different um mediums. Mm, I, I definitely agree. It's it's a game. It <laughs> really is. Yeah. But it, I, I did have a question for you actually. Oh yeah. Because yeah. listening to you and I'm like, oh that's interesting. And then I just popped up with this question, like, I'm actually curious to know why and what got you started with interviewing other artists. Uh, so, you know, I was um, kind of out of, just out of course, you know, I finished course, um, and I was interested in, you know, chatting with people and um, meeting artists online and things like that, and I was interested in live streaming. Um, so, I, I, you know, I was doing live streaming, I didn't know where it was going, um, and, you know, I kind of popped ideas ideas and maybe you know someone else could chat with me while I'm painting kind of a thing um, and I, I enjoyed that you know I was doing it with um, my mates at first so, and I was meeting some a few um, people online and things like that and doing it with them um, yeah and I just you know I kind of really enjoyed that um, and I wanted to find out more too you know I want to talk to um, artists that actually have done things and um, with artists on many different levels um, because I enjoy chatting and finding out you know their story their journey um, and learning from it mm. and yeah it's always it's always fun you know it's um, you know every person is different and it's it's really interesting their story what their opinion is about you know um, how they got where they are and th and things like that. It's really helpful. Um, yeah. For sure. So yeah, and I was I'm a big fan of Bobby Chio's work and his channel that he's got there. Um, and I I always enjoyed like watching his videos, watching all the artists and things like mm -hmm. that. So yeah, that kind of what I what I was interested in doing is. Um, that kind of thing so that's kind of what got me interested cool that answer your question enough <laughs> <laughs> i think you've answered my question plenty <laughs> awesome yeah I, I every now and again there'll be like artists that do ask me questions which is i i encourage it you know i'm like you know feel free to ask me questions along the way um mm. because in a way these these kind of things aren't like, I don't want them to be just, like, the interview, per se. You know, I'm just interviewing yeah. 
the artist. It's I want it to be you know a bit more about just like what we're chatting about. Um, conversation. Yeah, conversation. you know. Yeah, it, it's that's what I'm like trying to do here, kind of a thing. <laughs> I mean, it's it's good. I was very interested when you approached me about it. I thought it was a very unique thing. Like, wow, okay. And I got to watch a couple of your other interviews. Give it a try. See what happens. Sounds like a cool dude to chat with. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, yeah. And, yeah, I wanted... I've always um, enjoyed doing these uh, live streams. I was, like, live drawing... Um, but that kind of got to me when I was producing not so great work, you know, I would try and paint something within 40 minutes of live streaming. Um, <laughs> so with that I'm also chatting, maybe I might be chatting with an artist or with a mate or someone. So I get distracted, um, <laughs> yeah. so you know, I won't get so much painting done in that 45 minutes. So in the end I decided to like do these time lapses because I still get to show everyone like my process in painting and things like that um, and produce um, okay quality work, you know, um, yeah. without, you know, um, destroying my work because I felt like when I was live streaming <laughs> the work wasn't, you know, coming out the greatest. Um, yeah. Cool. But yeah, um, I was thinking about this because I've been doing it for quite a bit now, you know. Um, and I think I'm somewhere in the 120 videos or something now. Uh, definitely, I started off, I mean, started off a few times really. Uh, so I, you know, I've had a few hobbies here and there, you know, I've been interested in animation. Um, I've done Lego animation, um, mm -hmm. and a, and a few other things, like I was into 3D, I've tried 3D before, um, mm -hmm. have you tried any 3D? No, <laughs> I was, I just, I, I can see other people doing it, and I can appreciate it very much, but I, I, I think a new software does make me a bit nervous so I actually haven't really gotten the courage to go and learn the you know the programs and how it works and what are the rules Cause that's the main thing I found when I was learning about digital work was that I had to change my mindset because things that work on traditional don't work the same way in digital even if you try to make them that way earn a new set of skills and doing that for modeling or something like that, that's a bit daunting if you've never even modeled or anything like that. Yeah, it, it is challenging, you know. Um, and, you know, I got into it, you know, I was thinking I was going to, um, that was my way in, is doing all this 3D stuff. Um, but, yeah, in the end I kind of got a bit sick of it, you know, it wasn't my thing, um, I yeah. was kind of dreading it, you know, I didn't want to sit there on the computer kind of modeling, um, for more than, you know, two or three hours at max a day, um, so yeah, in the end it's like, well, I, I love drawing, I could draw all day, I could illustrate all day, um, you know, it was, it was very helpful, because, you know, I could see, um, characters I was creating in 3D um, and yeah it was a helpful experience to learn that kind of thing um, to yeah to help me do things and you know I would consider it like doing a bit more on that um, but I just prefer to kind of paint it all out. <laughs> yeah it takes a lot more time to learn than it does to actually produce. <laughs> But yeah, I, you know, I encourage anyone that does do it um, to keep going. I mean, it could be helpful. I'm thinking maybe it might be helpful to, you know, create a, one of my characters or something in in one of those 3D software, just like spend an hour or two just creating it, um, just so I can see it in like different angles or something like that. 
um, even if it's yeah. like you know very blockily done it might help me to <laughs> you know create a create a like a more realistic basis to then paint over um, yeah <laughs> a good way to look at it uh, so I see you do a f you do a few different subjects and, and drawings and things um, what is your like favorite subject to create uh, so by subject you mean what's exactly uh, yeah like um, whether it's drawing human characters or it's drawing environments. Um, yeah, what what kind of is your favorite thing? I see. Um, I think at the moment I really like to draw characters because I'm more comfortable to draw characters. Awesome. And also because characters are the how do I say this? Um, <laughs> how to say it without sounding really offensive you know <laughs> <laughs> well let's just say that y you know when you have a story that you want to tell hmm. it's all you know it's all in your mind you know what's going to happen you know the story and the characters are the ones that actually make that story possible hmm. and they they give life to the story yeah definitely um, hmm. yeah they are the ones that carry forward your end result and your end goal I mostly do characters. I want to be able to do scenes and storytelling scenes and environments. But I haven't gotten to put attention on focusing and practicing on those aspects yet. Like I said, because I'm more comfortable to do characters. Awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, um, you say you're, you're like more focused on that one subject. Sorry, what was that? Uh, so you're actually, you're more of focused on that one subject. Um, of yeah, for the moment, mm. for the moment. Yeah. Uh, that's, you Do know. You, huh? Sorry. <laughs> what were you going to say? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to keep interrupting you. No, that's all right. What were you going to say? Yeah. <laughs> At the moment, I, if you go onto my DeviantArt, you can see I have several folders. And the first three ones are actually st stories. Hmm. In the very near future, I'm going to have to get out of that comfort zone, buckle down and actually start getting to work on practicing the scenes and environment so that I can actually create those stories. Hmm. Sure, or well, very <laughs> soon, very soon, I'm going to have to start learning that. Hmm. You would see more of that from me in the future. <laughs> awesome. I mean, yeah, I everyone's different, you know. Um, for me, I was pretty much just kind of character, um, focused on character. Background was very secondary. Um, mm. Wasn't really interested in, yeah, I struggled with it, obviously. Um, I mean, I, I still do. Um, but in having t having put myself into these projects of creating these books, um, scenes and different things that are going on, um, I kind of have to bring those skills. Like I have to learn, if I want to tell the story properly, I do have to learn a bit about drawing environments and um, those aspects of things, uh, scaling and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, just to help out in creating this bigger project. Um, but yeah, you can be on either side of that kind of scale, whether you're kind of more niche into just kind of doing characters and you're really good at doing that, um, or if you're more wide spectrum doing stuff. Um, yeah. 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 N nothing else said on that. <laughs> I have no no differing opinions there. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Uh, um, for me, I definitely love animals. I love drawing animals. Um, 
I mean, I wanted to be like a vet when I was younger, um, but yeah, things changed. I knew I couldn't cut <laughs> open animals and things like that. Um, but yeah, understandable. <laughs> but you know, I, I just really love drawing animals, so that kind of um, led me to doing these things. And yeah, you can see kind of see that in all my art that. So I've got animals there. I do, you might see from time to time, I might do drawings of humans and human characters. Um, on my next adventure of creating mm. another book, um, I am, nice. I've got a, a human character there. So, you know, that's going to be both challenging uh, and fun. Um, and, yeah, you know... A few years ago, I would really be like saying no to those kind of things because I know that I'm not good at that. So you know, and stay away. Um, yeah. But no, now I've got like enough confidence that um, I know I know it's going to be challenging and it's not you know not going to be the best of my abilities. But um, you know, hey, I'm I'm going to learn something from it, kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, I definitely think, but I think you'll do a great job anyway. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, it was a little book that me and my sister made. And, you know, back then she could draw pretty good. Like, she could draw uh, characters and things like that. Um, I could only mediocre draw, like, kind of you know, tabletops, um, <laughs> You're right. like, yeah, kind of little environments, and, and I could draw, like, dinosaurs and things like that, I was really interested in drawing dragons and dinosaurs, and, oh, same, yeah, <laughs> awesome, uh, yeah, anything I'd ever draw as a child, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything fantasy related, I was, you know, all over that, drawing it, trying to create things like that, um, yeah, so, you know, I, I asked her to create me some terrains of the characters, um, and I just used those and finished my book off with that. It doesn't exist anymore, it's long gone, that book, so I've got to kind oh. of piece it together in my head, and, um, mm. yeah, it's going to be fun but challenging. Um, yeah, so it's like a really cool project though. <laughs> really, really cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't do it if I didn't think it was any good. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I've always got something new coming up that I'm like, oh, I've got to do this. Or, <laughs> you know, um, and, and some things take me years to do, like it's in my mind, um, but I'm doing so many other projects, um, you know that I'm like oh I'll get to it one day <laughs> <laughs> the struggles <laughs> <laughs> understand <laughs> this is not new territory for artists <laughs> I'm telling you that <laughs> no it is not <laughs> no <laughs> um so you've you've worked on a like a few projects um it says um how were those in how long they go for? Um, I I have a very, I don't know, I I, <laughs> I kind of have a a rotation of the projects that I'm doing. Hmm. At the moment, I currently have three. I'm working on the Arcanist as a main one at the moment, but they t sort of rotate. So if I get bored, I move on to the next one, and if I get bored, I move on to the next one. But that way, I still have progress. Awesome. something new to bring to the table every time I re go like every, I revisit that project yeah <laughs> do you like switch multiple times in a day or multiple times in a week or how does that go uh, it's normally like I'll work on one project for several weeks or mm. several months yeah and sometimes I will die for that particular project <laughs> and I'll get a bit bored but I won't I won't discard it at all 
I'll just leave it there. Eventually, when I've taken my mind off of it and I've had time to think about other things and I've had time to work on other things, back and go, oh, I had this still to do, wow. And then I go and I look back on it and I'm like, oh, I made this, it's so cool. <laughs> oh, why, why didn't I finish that? And then I get more motivated to just go back to it. Because mm -hmm. I think so amazing and amusing when you draw something and at the time you're like, this is really bad. And you just put it away. And then a couple of years later, you come back, you're like, what was I thinking? This is great. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. I like doing that, you know, seeing what I've created um, a few months back. Um, it can be the opposite too, you know, like, um, <laughs> yeah. you can go back and look at it and be like, what did I do there, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And yes. you know that's that that just shows your progress, you know, and it, it might yeah get you motivated to actually fix it up and and work yeah. on it a bit further. Um. Yeah, definitely. I remember working on a particular project, and this was when I was still very very young and still in primary school, and I was working on this comic, and I would draw it on loose leaf paper, so it was all lined. So I drew a couple of pages of this particular project and I just got bored. I didn't think much of it. So I just kind of put it away and several years uh, like later, high school, I'm an adult now. I find this and I look at it and I go, uh, all my logic and reason as a human being just flew out the window the second I decided <laughs> to make this, co <laughs> this, this comic. And I'm looking at it going, I don't understand how my thought process was back then but of my younger self portrayed in this project gives me so many ideas hmm. like that looks great that could be cool and there's certain things that you can pick out from stuff that you thought about when you were younger that you can make new with a new set of skills and you can actually bring it to life again and make it better away anything I do anymore because I can look back on it even if it's really poorly done I can mm. still look at it and go oh I had this cool idea for this particular pair of shoes or this character had really nice hair or I don't know that was a really cool story or this character was funny or something and you just go okay cool I can recreate that and make it more rational and <laughs> more logical <laughs> when you're a child things in the world don't quite they don't make sense the way it does to adults. Mm. Sense to you at the time, but you know your viewpoints change as you get older. Mm. Exactly why those, um, you know, those the kids draw something and then the adult artists actually, you know, interpretate what they've drawn <laughs> and you know draw it. Yeah. Should be really cool. Um, Okay, I might do that with my daughter one day if she draws like a cool mm. cartoon character or something. I might like um, go over top of it and draw my version of it. I think that would yeah. be very interesting to do. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great. Another reason why I, I, you know, I never throw anything away, especially from those younger moments of my childhood when even if my the stuff I was creating was really bad. Uh, when I look at it again, I have this reoccurring realization about myself when I was that young, is that I had no considerations or doubts or anything about creating this particular thing hmm. whatsoever to just draw and just communicate. And I had no doubts about what I was communicating get older you get told don't communicate that or you can't communicate that you can't draw this because it's not appropriate or it's upsetting or blah 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 and then you're afraid to communicate and you're afraid to capture something from your imagination or something from life that you've observed because you're afraid you can't do that but when I was a kid, I had no concerns about these things, and I would just, I would just draw, and I would just create, and that's a skill. It really, really is a skill. 
And when people actually lose that, they they create with barriers. Mm. My older work, I can see that I can I can create without having any fear of barriers. Artist yeah. is about you know you mm -hmm. are communicating your opinion whether people like it or not. You are communicating what you want through your skills. Yeah. It, it, it exactly <laughs> like that, you know. Um, yeah, we start off not knowing anything, you know. We don't really know much. We're just <laughs> having fun drawing and things like that. Um, so, yeah, we're not aware of all these other things, like, you know, you've got to uh, rule lines and you've got to um, keep all your lines straight. You know, you, you don't know <laughs> all this stuff, so um, you're just creating and drawing um which is you know something i kind of encourage you know just just draw um like a, a video i just um put up is you know just rest smile draw you know just keep creating um and yeah don't worry about what other people are saying you know you just gotta keep creating um, and I was watching a video as well, she was talking a bit about, you know, um, how she, sometimes how she's creating, but she's just trying to get the idea down, you know, just trying to get a good yeah. idea, she's not worried about, um, what it looks like and things like that, but she's just trying to portray, you know, what, for instance, like Moana or something like that, what her shoes might have looked like or what her you know t-shirt she's not too worried about what it looks like um that comes a little later you know um yeah yeah um yeah awesome it's been uh great chatting with you um <laughs> you too you're not too far from me um in in z here so you know uh, two hours by airplane <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah any anything else you'd like to uh, um Say or ask? Um, I'm not too sure unless you have another question. Uh, um, what's your most favourite project you're working on now? At the moment it's the Arcanist. Awesome. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it just in case I jinx myself and decide to never pick this one up again there's not <laughs> much in it <laughs> um to be because i've already scripted it out um it's got a character <laughs> that is <laughs> it's pretty personal to me because she's got uh, like a very strong tenacity hmm. even if things are going wrong all around her you know despite how she feels despite her opinions despite adverse that she could be feeling or thinking she just cannot let go of her basic purpose get towards the end of the story is her goal and her her duty and her tenacity to not let go of that despite whatever else is happening is something, uh, you know, taught to me by family members. They just say you're never to give up and sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you really do want to just quit it. You just want to stop. That, you know, being tenacious and actually of your true basic purpose is very important mm. and it's something very valuable and for her that's admire a lot if I see that in another person and that's why she is at the moment my favorite character and why that is my favorite project and capture that personality in a drawing or in a comic is gonna be interesting <laughs> It sounds very fun though. Um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's been uh, yeah me and the Alpha Squadron. Um, 
awesome uh thanks everyone for checking <laughs> out this video whether you checked it out live or through youtube uh yeah don't forget to like share subscribe um yeah everyone yeah keep drawing keep creating and we'll see you in the next video bye bye